were talking about rules of inference if you remember right so basically we had talked about this eight rules in detail right addition simplification conjunction and so on right and the main idea was if we consider this particular compound proposition right then it's tautology in all the cases right and what should be our objective at the time of uh, solving questions how 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 are we going to use this rules any idea let's say two statements are given to me let's say p and q and based on this some conclusion is given to me then which rule i can apply conjunction rule ha huh. conjunction or i can also apply simplification first i can apply conjunction so i can say p and q because this two are two and if p is given to um, if p and q is given to me then i can so in this particular case the correct answer is conjunction is right but let's say uh, in second case where p and q is given to you right the, uh, the statement is saying p is 2 as well as q is 2 and then we can conclude either p or q which is nothing but simplification so in summary what we will try to do we whatever is given we will try to put that in terms of p part of this particular implication so that means this selection so if that is given let's say uh, this is given then we can conclude something which is here at q side so that is the idea okay so our objective should be to try to obtain try to represent whatever is given in terms of in terms of which part hypothesis or conclusion 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 we will derive right q is my conclusion if we can adjust whatever is given in terms of this hypothesis or premises then only we will be able to use this rules do you agree with me what i am trying to convey here is set of statements will be given to you first thing what you need to do you need to convert them into you need to pick propositional variables for each of the sentences you need to represent them uh, with the help of this operators you conjunction disjunction implication and so on and then uh, you should aim for obtaining template like this if you have something like this then you can directly apply this rules right if if uh, this circled part is with you then you can talk about the right hand side part and then uh, you can argue further so that is the idea so always aim for this left hand side portion if if you can whatever input is with you if you can somehow adjust them or combine them like this uh, let's say uh, two statements are given to you p implies q q implies r right and then straight away what you can uh, do is you can observe it observe that this is directly as associated with this transitivity rule right and you can observe that this is nothing but left hand side or my premises of this particular transitivity rule so i can straight away say that conclusion is p implies r with the help of this transitivity rule so that is that right so it it it, it uh, in in your uh, given input it may not be the case that these two statements are coming together it may not be the case this statement is directly uh, given to you you need to somehow derive it that that is also that is also a possibility right so but uh, at the end of the day you you need to be smart enough to observe these things and then finally apply this rules okay fine so let's consider some questions uh, then this will become more clear so let's say the first question is like this uh, these things are given to you p implies q is given to you then negation p implies r is given to you then r implies s is given to you 
And finally, the conclusion is negation Q implies S. Okay, so let me use capital Q only. Negation Q implies S. So what can you say about validity of this? So can we conclude this out if, if this, these statements are given to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how, how, how will you proceed? Which rule you are going to apply? The resolution in the first and second. First and second may resolution or second or third may. Or second or third may transitivity. Sir, <laughs> resolution may to or statement. Okay, uh, you can also use this. You can check these rules one more time if you want, and then again go back and think. Sir, we can use transitivity. Okay, we can use transitivity. What we will obtain by applying transitivity? On which yes, statements you will apply? So always make sure you write down like this statement one, statement two, statement three. So it's easy. Or or maybe you can give uh, here like this one, two, three. So whenever you argue at the time in in bracket you must write down which rules you are applying on which statement sir, also that is also in ah. sir ah yes go on sir, sir transitivity rule sir two or third will apply karenge to sir uh, not not p implies s ho jayega sir okay so this or is sir, by transitivity or, on statement two and statement three so then or sir first wale pe contra positive laga denge sir not q implies not p और सर ये हो जाएगा आंसर अब फर्स्ट को चेंज कर देंगे सर और ये दोनों पर फिर ट्रांजिटिविटी अप्लाई कर देंगे सर नॉट क्यू अप्लाई यस ओके फाइनली वी कैन कंक्लूड नॉट क्यू एम्प्लाइज एस फाइन ओके सो दिस इज डन लेट्स गो टू द सेकंड क्वेश्चन इफ आई एम गिल्टी आई मस्ट बी पनिश आई एम गिल्टी दस आई मस्ट बी पनिश so first thing what you need to do before you uh, conclude whether this is uh, logically correct or not you need to give me its equivalent propositional representation propositional logic representation first statement is if i am guilty then i must be punished the second statement is i am guilty the conclusion is i must be punished ah uh, yes so p implies q and p implies uh, okay so uh, first tell me implies. which proposition uh, you are uh, which variable you are using for which statement p so you p are using for i am guilty okay and q for i must be punished i am not writing down the entire statement q is let's say corresponding to punish so basically uh, the first statement is p implies q if i am guilty right then i must be punished this is the first statement statement 1 we can say the statement 2 is i am guilty so that means p is given to you right and conclusion is i must be punished so this is nothing but q now so we can use modus ponens okay p is given to you, you which is true p implies q is given to you hence we can say the conclusion is q and here also conclusion is q is given to you given to us so therefore we can say the argument is logically correct with the help of this rule okay fine good so now the next one is similar but slightly if i am guilty i must be punished the only uh, change is in the second sentence as well as uh, in in the conclusion the second statement is i am not guilty and the conclusion is thus i must not be punished so here is the change and also remember it is not like that every time the given statements whatever they are concluding it's 
correct sometimes it may happen that they are concluding something which is wrong right so you need to be careful don't assume that you are you are supposed to give proof every time right okay so here what will be the equivalent representation the first will remain as it is p implies q what what will happen with respect to the second statement and conclusion and not p not p okay and conclusion not q not q so equivalently can i say i need to check this p not p and p implies q this implies negation q if this is tautology then i can say that the argument is logically correct right otherwise it's not now now you can tell me further so if p implies q how not of p implies not of q they both are not similar like they are not equivalent not of q implies not of p is equivalent to p implies q ha huh, that is fine but uh, now you need to give me one truth assignment because uh, with the help of which you can say that this is not a tautology right means how 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 will you convey this you are just saying but you are not giving the insights means you are not giving any proof or any uh, any any particular instance where this particular uh, implication is false sir so if p is false and q is true then this fails okay so let me write that down p is false and q is true okay so q is true so that means uh, this neg okay so let me use a different color here so if uh, q is true then uh, negation q is false right so basically he is targeting this tf case and now what we need to do p is false uh, hence negation p is true and since p is false we don't care about uh, the conclusion part implication part so the entire proposition will be true and true and true is always true so that means this case is possible here so therefore this is not tautology right with this particular for this particular assignment the implication is wrong so therefore the argument is logically incorrect do you agree yes sir yes sir okay so now um, i i just uh, need to highlight this particular fact in the previous lecture uh, i was uh, i was highlighting that you are supposed to use only rules of inference that is fine but that will come if this particular uh, compound proposition this particular implication is tautology if it is tautology then you must use rules of inference only but if it is not tautology in that particular case you need to show why it is not so at that time what you can do you can give this kind of truth assignment and you can just say for this particular truth assignments the implication is false and hence uh, the conclusion is wrong and we can say that argument is logically incorrect right? so that is the idea okay so let's continue with the next question uh, if you do every problem in the textbook then you will get an a grade in this course the first statement my statement 1 statement 2 you obtain an a grade in this course and conclusion is you did therefore you did every problem in the textbook okay. so again first what we need to do we need to represent this statement with the help of propositional variables 
so can anyone tell me the equivalent representation sir let uh, p be the first statement if you do every problem in the textbook okay so let's say this is p getting a grade okay so i'm getting a grade is q p is, okay, so problem doing is corresponding to p let's say and a grade is corresponding to let's say q then first statement will be p implies q okay p implies q this is my first statement second statement q okay and what we are concluding here p okay uh now what can you say so basically they are proposing this uh q and p implies q implies p we well, we need to verify validity of this particular claim so not correct again same case p is false and q is true okay p is false and q so is p, true if i uh, okay so again let me use red so p is false then p implies q will be true and q what you are suggesting about q true true okay. so with this particular assignment p is equal to f q is equal to true right this particular implication is not valid right because uh, we are not getting tautology here the final answer of the uh, with this particular tooth value assignment is nothing but false for this particular compound proposition and hence we can say that the argument is not valid right the right? argument is invalid we can say okay so let's consider one more question so here what we again some statements are given to you if it rains today then we will not have a party tonight if we do not have a party tonight then we will have a party tomorrow therefore if it rains today then we will have a party tomorrow what do you think sir let p be it rains today okay and q, we will uh, it's negation q basically so so q is if we will have a party tonight so it's negation q and uh, if we do not have a party tonight is again negation q then we will have a party tomorrow it's r we, we will have party tomorrow is r yes sir. okay so basically it's like this p implies negation q negation q implies r and the conclusion is p implies r yes sir and what do you think it's uh, valid or invalid valid right which rule you will apply here transitivity I... transitivity okay fine 